My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll examine sulfur dioxide by exploring its uses, chemical properties, exposure limits, and first aid measures. Sulfur dioxide is used in many industries for a wide variety of purposes. For the wine industry, sulfur dioxide serves as an antibiotic and antioxidant, protecting wine from spoilage by bacteria and oxidation. Its antimicrobial action also helps to minimize volatile acidity. Sulfur dioxide is responsible for the words contain sulfites found on wine labels. The table grape industry utilizes sulfur dioxide as a fumigant to control rot and reduce the darkening of the stem. Sulfur dioxide gas is applied through a process called total utilization, where a cylinder connected to a storage room releases its entire contents into the room. Sulfur dioxide also serves as a color preservative for dried fruits. In this application, sulfur dioxide containers are connected to a gassing chamber which is filled with dried fruit. The sulfur dioxide permeates the fruit which preserves the vibrant color of the product. Sulfur dioxide boils at 14 degrees Fahrenheit at normal atmospheric pressure. This means that in most conditions, sulfur dioxide will not remain a liquid, but will be in a gaseous state. However, in cold winter conditions, sulfur dioxide will remain in a liquid state. Sulfur dioxide vapor is more than two times heavier than air, as expressed by a vapor density of 2.26. This means that sulfur dioxide will accumulate at ground level, which will be hazardous to humans in the area. The ability of a substance to dissolve in water is referred to as its solubility. Sulfur dioxide is highly soluble, which means it readily absorbs into water. This explains why eyewash and safety showers are essential for decontamination in the event of exposure. Thankfully, sulfur dioxide is non-flammable as indicated by the zero in the red quadrant of its NFPA 704 placard. Sulfur dioxide is considered a significant health hazard. It has a distinct irritating odor, which some describe as rotting eggs. If inhaled, it can cause burning to the respiratory tract, making it difficult to breathe. However, because of sulfur dioxide low odor threshold and recognizable odor, People generally seek relief from its effects at relatively low concentrations. Studies have shown that sulfur dioxide can be tasted at concentrations as low as 0.35 parts per million. Sulfur dioxide is corrosive and human contact can cause skin burns and eye irritation. It is important to know what concentration of sulfur dioxide is safe for humans. Permissible exposure limit, or PEL, is the legal limit of exposure of an employee to a chemical substance without respiratory protection. For sulfur dioxide, OSHA has mandated the PEL as 5 parts per million, but some states, such as California, have lowered the threshold to 2 parts per million. Exposure to concentrations above the PEL is not allowed unless respiratory protection is provided. IDLH is an acronym that stands for Immediately Dangerous to Life and Health. The IDLH threshold represents the concentration of a chemical to which healthy adult workers could be exposed without suffering permanent health effects. Sulfur dioxide's IDLH is 100 parts per million. This threshold is important because employees may not enter IDLH atmospheres using air purifying respirators. Only SCBAs or supplied air respirators can be used. Sulfur dioxide is often stored in gas cylinders or tongue containers. Tongue containers must be stored in the horizontal position and off the ground to avoid corrosion. Cylinders must be upright and secured with a clamp or chain. When a cylinder is not in use, the protective cap must be installed. Neither container type should be stored near combustible or flammable materials such as oil or gasoline. Storage locations should be selected away from the inlet of ventilation fans and air conditioning units. If you are exposed to sulfur dioxide, it is important to implement first aid measures immediately. Inhalation is the most common route of exposure to sulfur dioxide. Exposure to low concentrations of vapor can typically be addressed by simply moving to fresh air. If high concentrations of sulfur dioxide were inhaled, medical aid must be sought out. Sulfur dioxide will aggressively attack skin tissue, the result being chemical burns. When this occurs, it is vital that the affected area be immediately flushed with water for at least 15 minutes. This is why it is critical to ensure that eyewash and safety showers are available and in good working order. After flushing is complete, seek out medical aid. 
It is important to instruct first responders not to apply burn cream, as that will prevent sulfur dioxide from escaping the skin tissue. The eye is a particularly sensitive organ that must be protected from sulfur dioxide exposure. If eye contact occurs, utilize an eye wash or face wash station to flush the eye for at least 15 minutes. If contact lenses are worn, they must be removed before flushing the eye to prevent sulfur dioxide from being trapped between the eye and the lens. After flushing is complete, seek out medical aid. I trust you found this video on sulfur dioxide awareness useful. We have more videos on our channel about chemical safety and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.